Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to read CSV files in order to automate some processes in After Effects. I've already made a video before on the basics of reading files like CSV and JSON, but in this one, I'm going to be specifically addressing how to format and loop through easily in order to automate, in this case, the process of creating adjustment layer compositions with custom effects applied so that we can easily go in here and add some footage and get different looks according to our CSV file. And inside of the CSV file itself, we're gonna be giving it things like our comp name, comp width, comp height, and effects. And with this process, you can either shrink or expand the number of properties and things you wanna add or automate in the whole process. Before we get started with this video, I do wanna remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Make sure you follow us there as code comes out earlier than the videos themselves. Also in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks and help us out financially. So to visualize our CSV for today, I've loaded it up in Google Sheets just to make it a little bit nicer looking than uh, Notepad. And we have four columns. One contains the comp names, one contains the comp width, one contains the comp height, and one contains the effect. So in theory, what you could do if you wanted is just generate a ton of these based on your specifications and have it auto populate and create as many different compositions as you want. This would theoretically allow you to make thousands or even more uh, compositions with these effects and then sort of randomly generate things if you want to take it a step further. Inside of After Effects we don't really need anything but I'm going to keep a piece of footage in here that I can easily drop into the layer because we're going to create an adjustment layer which has these effects on it. So you can also get this CSV file as a test. You might notice uh, there's a NT day night uh, match name here. That is something that you probably don't have, so you can just replace it with a different effect. But all of our effects are going to be based on the scripting match names. So to get started with the script itself, I'm going to create a variable called CSV file. And we're going to set this equal to the file uh, that we're reading in itself. In my case, I have mine in my documents called comps.csv. So I'll set it to documents slash comps.csv. And now I'm going to create an array called CSV data, make it empty. We're going to read in all the data from our CSV into this. And because we already know what these values in the first row are going to be, we're going to be reading it row by row. Uh, we can start from row one to save a little bit. So the way I'm going to do a loop through my entire CSV is by doing a do while loop and we want to do something in brackets while we're not at our CSV file dot end of file. What end of file means is when you're in the process of reading a document, you can go line by line and until you reach the end of the file, that's basically what it's going to do inside of here. So we then need to take our CSV file itself and open it. Um, the open method takes uh, an argument we can write or we can read inside of it. We want to read all the data inside of here. And now that we have it open, we can go line by line and say CSV data. We're going to push a piece of data for every line of our document into our CSV data array. So the first piece of our array is going to contain all of these names. The second one is going to contain the first row here then this row, and then so on and so forth. So each time through, we're going to push CSV file dot read. We're not just gonna read the entire document at once. We're gonna read LN or read line. This will go one line at a time for us. Then once we're outside of all this, we're going to take our CSV file and close it. Now let's see how our data is formatted. I'm going to grab my CSV data and alert it. And then I'll duplicate that and alert the first item in our CSV data array. So if I run this, I'm going to first get the chunk of all of the data in one big alert, which is fine. And now that we want to alert the second one, the next alert message should just give us comp name, comp width, comp height, and effects. And as you can see, it does. Now, you might have noticed that I said we need to only start at the second row because we already know which column is going to be the 
uh, comp name, etc. The first column will be comp name, then comp width, height, effects, and that's as much more as you want basically. So this time if I alert the second item in my array, I'm going to get my first bit of composition data we want to use to automate the creation of a composition. So that being said, we're going to loop through our CSV data. Since we made it an array, we can easily loop through it. The way you usually loop through arrays is by saying var i is equal to zero, and you say for that variable is less than your array csv data dot length increment i but as we said we don't need to start with line zero or line one uh, if you're not on an array and that means we can give it uh, the starting value of one so we don't have to have that confusion so each time through in this for loop we want to generate a composition with this name this width this height and these effect match names so how do we get the data and how is it formatted inside of this for loop? Well, if we go ahead and say alert CSV data index I, it's going to give us each line each time in the for loop. So if I run it, we're going to get the first one, my comp one, then the second one, my comp two, and the third one, my comp three. If you wanted to go further and get, say, the first element, normally you would need to format it like this, but this is going to give you the first element of a string. Um, as it stands, all of the CSV data being brought in is just a string. It's not separated out quite yet into these different columns. Everything is combined into one single line of text. So the way we're going to uh, get this data out is by creating a split. So I'll create a variable called this CSV row. And inside of here, I'm going to set this CSV row equal to our current CSV data line we got. But to convert this string into an array, we're going to split it by a comma. Now the reason we split it by a comma is because we have a comma separating our comp name, comp width, comp height, and effects. So now if we alert this CSV row index zero, we should get just the composition names. We have my comp one, my comp two, and my comp three. So just as a guide so we don't forget, what we can do is say index zero is going to be comp name, index one is comp width, index two is the comp height, and index three is our effects array. So now let's create a couple more variables. Again, we're going to need to be creating a composition and we're applying effects. So I'm going to create a variable called this comp and this effect. Each time through, I'm gonna set this comp equal to app.project.items, we're going to add a comp. Now I'll go ahead and load up the scripting guide and I will search for add comp. And I just wanna get the right parameters here. The first thing we need is the name. Well, we already know what our name is. It's this CSV row. If we look at our guide, it's index zero. So that's our name. Then we have our width. Our comp width is the same thing, but the next index up. So we'll say this CSV row index one, and then we'll go ahead and get the height, which we know is also the next one. And then we need pixel aspect ratio, the duration will just make 10 seconds, and the frame rate will just say 30. Of course, if you wanted, you could add this information as well into your CSV and read that in. Next, we need to create an adjustment layer in order to apply these effects to. So I'm going to create another variable called this adjustment layer and I'm going to set this equal to inside my for loop equal to um, our composition so this comp dot layers we're going to add a solid we need to add a solid because there's no function in order to create just an adjustment layer it's a property of any layer that you can create so we first need the fill color we'll make it white and we'll just reference the guide here we need the solid layer we'll just call this adjustment layer we need the width and height, which will grab this comp dot width, this comp dot height, turn on word wrap, and then the pixel aspect ratio, which we'll put at one. Now to make this an actual adjustment layer, we'll say this adjustment layer dot adjustment layer is equal to true. And that's all we have to do to make it an adjustment layer, just set the property equal to true. Then let's go ahead and open up our composition. We'll say this comp dot open, in viewer now before we run this i'm going to add one more thing before we run this little test and that's an app.begin undo group 
and at the very end of everything, we'll say app dot end undo group. The reason we're going to say this is so that we can easily undo everything. If we create like a hundred comps, we can hit Control Z and in one click get rid of everything. So I'm just going to call this uh, CSV comp creation, and let's go ahead and run this. You can see we get an error. Cannot call add comp because of parameter three. 1080 is not an integer. So this CSV row two is not an integer. That probably means we need to parse it from a string to an integer. So for each of the width and height, I'm going to say parse int, and this will convert any string into an integer. So I'll say parse int for the width and height, and now try it. And now you can see we have three compositions created, an adjustment layer that is an actual adjustment layer. And now we just need to go through and apply these effects based on their match names. Now we're going to get a tad fancy for a second and I'm actually going to change this effect. Actually, no, I'll add another variable called these effects. That's going to be an empty array. In order to extract the effects out of this sort of fake array I've made, I, instead of using commas, I've used this vertical line as a separator because CSVs are already separated by commas and I've surrounded everything in brackets. Now we need to basically parse this out into an actual array. The way we're going to do that is by saying these effects is equal to and our index is number three. So we'll say this CSV row three and we need to slice it up first. Slice, you need to give it A and B, which is the start and end point from which you will slice it. So we need to basically ignore the brackets. And to do that, we start at index zero and one will be after the bracket. So we start our cut at zero, or sorry, one. And then we need to start the end of the cut, not at the very end, but at the end minus one. So I'll say the CSV row dot length minus one. So that will give us the length of the entire string of this and subtract one from it. That will basically give us this string here, which we can then split like we did with the comma separated values, but split it by this vertical line. So let's go ahead and just make sure we're getting these effects correctly first. Say alert these effects. You can see we get just the match names with the lines in between. And if you just have one, of course, there's no line in between. So that's perfect. You can see we can quite quickly and easily undo all of that work we did because we created the undo groups. So now that we know we have that, we're going to, at the end of all that, split it by that character. And that will create an array based on the different values separated by that vertical character. So now I can say these effects zero and get the first value or these effects one and get the second value. So if I run this, you can see we get Adobe Glow 2, Adobe Gaussian Blur 2. And in the second example, we might get an error because there's not two undefined we just get, that's good. And as you can see, we can get all those effects. So now that we have them in array form, you know exactly how to loop through them. You can say four bar i is equal to zero. And actually we wanna use a different variable because we are already in side of a for loop with the i variable. And say e is less than these effects dot length e plus plus. And we're gonna say this effect is equal to this is the line where we apply the effect itself. We're going to grab this adjustment layer dot effects. We're going to add a property whose match name is these effects E. Then we're just going to leave it at that. We're not going to modify any of the values. We just want to apply the effects. At this point, if we did everything right, our script should be complete. So if I run this, you can see we have our three compositions. And if we go into the effects panel of our adjustment layer, we have different effects applied on each of these, which again, in this case, we can now like add a layer and see how these effects are looking and generate basically as many of these as we want. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link, follow us there. And you can also check out the CSV there as well. Down in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of the Discord server, you can join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can join the YouTube channel as a member, supporter, premium supporter, VIP, uh, in the description down below, get cool perks and help us out financially. 
Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.